Hello y'all and welcome to Young Folk Knits. Hello y'all and welcome to Young Folk Knits. My name is Casey and on this channel I mainly like to chat about my love for fiber. So I talk a lot about knitting, a little bit of crochet, some sewing, some spinning, cross stitch, whatever else may be tickling my fancy at the moment. I also like to chat about living on a small farm here in Arkansas where my husband, myself, and our kids are beekeepers. We also love to raise chickens, animals, gardens, and spend time outdoors here in the foothills of the Ozarks. So if any of that sounds like it might be your cup of tea, then make sure and hit that subscribe button and that way you won't miss out on any new video content. How are y'all? It has been a little bit since I've recorded a video. We went on a vacation and then when we came home, I got a little bit of a bug and I haven't been feeling well. And now my kids have strep. So yet again, we are the house of illness. Hopefully everyone will be feeling better in a few days. But I do feel like it has set me behind on all of my making. I just have had no energy and I've had to force myself a little bit to try to finish some things. And I would say that, you know, it's your hobby. There's no need to force yourself to do something normally. But I did have a few test knits. I just finished one test knit and I have two more going on right now. And I did a preview sew, which was really fun for So Liberated, which I will chat all about that in a minute. But it has been a very busy few weeks. <laughs> so I thought today would be a good time to sort of catch you up on all my finished objects, what I'm working on now, and maybe a little bit of what my plans are looking like for the summer. First of all though, what am I wearing? This is the Cleo cardigan, which is a pattern by Rachel Kurihara, I believe is how you say her last name. I test knit this for her right before I started this podcast. So I think it's been almost two years ago. Not this past summer, but the summer before. And I absolutely love it. I was feeling a little bit chilly and I just had on a little summer dress today. And I'm not outside. While I'm inside, I thought it would be nice to just put this on. And oh my goodness, the softness factor is off the charts. So I knit mine with two strands of Farmer's Daughter Fibers Surrey, their O'Dang base, held together. And I actually knit it in two different colors. So one of them was Dumpling, one of my all-time favorite Surrey base colors. And the other one was something like Desert Rose. I'll have to look, but I think that was the name of it. And it knit up very quickly because that Surrey, you can knit at a pretty big gauge. And it has these fun little textured straps, big sleeves, and a nice v-neck shaping. I love these buttons. I got them off of Etsy and I think they're so fun. It has this detail where you work this stripe and then you've got some lateral braid in there which gives it a really nice texture detail but that surrey sort of makes it not too harsh of a texture 
and then it has a tubular bind off, big flowy sleeves. This is such a comfy, cozy cardigan. It's absolutely one of my favorites. And I also love the length of it too. It's perfect for dresses because I made it where it hits me sort of right below my natural waist. And my natural waist is pretty high. I'd say it almost, I'd say my natural waist even hits slightly above my belly button or maybe right at it. Anyway, I like the length of this a lot, so I recommend this pattern. Okay, and moving on to recently finished objects. <laughs> so, I don't even think I have shown y'all this at all on the podcast. I finished it in a couple weeks, but some of the testers actually finished it in a week. <laughs> so, it knits up super fast. It is the Bright Here, Bright Now vest, which is a pattern by Caitlin from The Wonderless Knitter. And she collaborates a lot with Diamond Lane, which is a yarn company that is owned by the owner of, of The Lamb and Kid, Sarah. And one of their bases is this Big Birdie. So it's an Erin weight. Surrey yarn with a silk core and the fluff factor is unreal. I mean, I'm talking like some thick fluff. This is not even three strands of a lace weight Surrey held together. I would say it's more than that. I use their Big Birdie um, in the toffee base for my main color. I only needed one and a half skeins and I made the size five. And then I used a few of their other colors, like this green color and this meal color as a couple of my contrast colors. And then I used a few colors that I had in Santa's Garn Borstet Alpaca. I'm probably not saying that right. I gave it a go. That is also an Erin Waite Alpaca yarn. But if you hold them side by side, I feel like you could almost hold two of those together to get the Big Birdie thickness. But you know what? When it was knit up, it all looked really well and it I was able to hit gauge with all of it. So I'm really happy with the way it ended up. And I know Big Birdie is a little bit pricey and sometimes it can be hard to get because it's not always in stock. I think it's worth it if you can get it, but um, maybe you only have like a couple of skeins. I think a project like this would be perfect for it because you can use one-off skeins and then maybe fill in your gaps with some Sanus Garn at a, a little bit of a cheaper price. I feel like it was around $13 for a 50 gram ball and I did not use more than a 50 gram ball for any of the colors. I still have not blocked this yet. I just loved it so much I immediately put it on. And I wore it the other day over a striped linen shirt with my sleeves rolled up and some linen pants, like ankle length pants. And I loved it so much. It's so soft. It's so fluffy. So Caitlin did an awesome job. Something I love is that you don't have to go back and finish the armholes. It is worked with an I-cord edge, so whenever you join it in a round, you're done. <laughs> you don't have to go back and do that. And you just keep on working for your bottom ribbing, so the only thing you have to go back and do is pick up for your collar, and that's not bad. Not bad at all. I think this was a really fun fast knit. I like the way it looks. I think it's really fun to use some bright colors. You can mix it in with more muted colors and I think it makes a really fun funky vest. I was teasing saying that it reminded me of a Gap sweater I had from like 2006 and I loved that sweater. I had like a v-neck sweater with straps on it and the v was ribbed. <laughs> it had you know a, a ribbing on the hem. I loved that sweater and this is giving me those vibes. So y'all make sure and check it out. It should be coming out soon. I will keep you updated on my Instagram page, but I thoroughly enjoyed 
that test knit. I think that's my only finished object that was knitted. So I'm gonna show you a couple of knitted projects that I have still been working on. <laughs> So last time we chatted, I was still working on my birds of a feather shawl. Guess what? Newsflash! I am still not finished, but that's okay because every time I do work on it, I love it. <laughs> I did get a few more. Yeah, this is the front. I did get a few more sections in, so I got to work to another lace section and finished that. And still just chugging along when I get the chance. I really like those lace sections. I think they're so fun. So again, I am using Little Fox Yarn Co. Yeah, Little Fox Yarn Co. in the color Lemon Squeezy, and I've got two different bases in that. This is their Surrey base, and yeah, they're Surrey Silk Base, and it is classified as a heavy lace weight. So I use this instead of mohair, allergic to mohair. And then this is a single ply that they had, which is a organic non-superwash merino. And it has 437 yards for their 100 grams. So in the store, they offer their mono space, which is a superwash merino fingering single ply and it's got like 400 yards I think for 100 grams um, so this is a little bit different and the color turns out a little different on the non superwash but I love it and you might be able to contact her and see if they have the space they may still have some of it I'm not sure but it was I think she was just trying this out so I'm not sure if she's carrying it now or not but I love it I think it's been an absolute pleasure to knit and the thing I love about this shawl is that most of it is garter so not a lot of purling which is always lovely and I think this shaping is really pretty I'm halfway through as far as I've reached my full stitch count so now I will just be working to create the second half and it does take more yarn for the second half because you keep that same stitch count even though you're decreasing which I don't want to share too much because it is a paid for pattern but in my mind I'm halfway through the sections <laughs> so we'll go with that the other thing that I was working on is my moonset tee which nope moonset pullover which I am knitting in Camellia Fiber Co. Flax DK. I love it. The base is amazing. It's alpaca, linen, and silk. And it is plied. I think it's a two ply. It looks like a two ply to me. And it's just beautiful. The drape, so, so wonderful. I love the fact that you knit the collar as you go. So I do have a, a tiny bit of seaming to do here which is part of the pattern but the collar itself is knit so I don't have to go back and do that it is joined in the round this is a pattern by Haley from Ozetta and unfortunately this pattern just got put on hold but it was for a good reason and that is because I have cast on and am working on a test knit for Haley from Ozetta. So there is a new yarn by Wool Dreamers and it is S-A-O-N-A. -A. Now a friend of mine, Selma, she told me that this word in Spanish is Salma. So I believe that's how she said it. Selma, if you watch this, I probably said it wrong I'm sorry it is a lovely heavy fingering weight yarn which is 50% cotton and 50% wool so I think that's a good base for a summertime top because that cotton will give it even more breathability it's a two ply and Ozetta did a collaboration with them so she has all these lovely neutral earthy colors there's some grays a brown 
this cream color is called Notes. There's a green, so you just definitely check that out. Wool Dreamers did offer me yarn support, so I appreciate that so very much. But I'm really enjoying this. It's it's a really nice texture and fiber, and it's super fun to knit. I have noticed my yarn splits a little bit, but it doesn't split and then take off splitting down the rest of my yarn, which sometimes if your yarn splits a little bit, like it will get into the rest of the skein, just it just starts splitting. And this does not do that, so I do really like that a lot. Mm, just realized I left my project across the room, so one moment please. <laughs> I'm back so it doesn't look like much at the moment but as I said I've been sick I've had sick kids I just have not been able to work much on it but this is the back and I have worked on my short rows and I am currently working on my underarm shaping and it's really enjoyable yarn to knit up oh this is the back by the way feel like it's gonna be a really comfy staple piece. I think this color will go well with a lot of things. I mean, even under this sweater would be cute. I like it. I will share more progress on this soon. It's due June 14th, so I need to make some progress. <laughs> I am holding it in this lovely bag that I recently received from Mood Living and stay tuned because june 10th on my instagram page i'm going to be giving one of these away so make sure and follow me on instagram if you're not already you can find me at youngfolk.knits so i have another finished object that is not knitting it is actually sewing And that is this Joni top. So this is a pattern from So Liberated. It was just released this past week, I think. <laughs> anyway, I think it's perfect timing for Me Made May. So Liberated got in touch with me and asked if I would be interested in doing a preview sew for them. So it was really fun to get the pattern a little bit early before the release. And so I ended up ordering some fabric, some linen that I really wanted from Blackbird Fabrics in Canada, which is one of my favorite places to order fabric from. I order from them a lot. Highly recommend them. But I am in the U.S. They are in Canada and it did take a little bit for where my package to get here not blackbird fabric company's fault i think it was the postal service's fault and i finally got a little bit nervous i thought that the package might have been lost so i went stash diving instead and found a few different fabrics i thought would be really cool color blocked so this yellow is some merchant mills linen and then this is actually some silk noir fabric from Stone Mountain and Daughter. And then this right here is some linen fabric from a year or two ago from Blackbird Fabrics that I had in my fabric cabinet. <laughs> I think that they turned out super cute color blocked. I'm really happy with it. So overall, I think this is an amazing pattern. You can mix and match sleeves, collars, hems. You just have a lot of different options with this pattern. So I think it's a great top. I love how on the inside everything is finished. Even on the back, your seams are finished. I just think it's really nice. One thing I will say is that I'm 5'8", and I do feel like it turned out very cropped for me. So I would probably add an inch or two if I make it again. But I know not all people are quite as tall as me. And I have quite a, a difference between my 
full bust and upper bust measurement and then my waist measurement so my shirt sort of has to go out and then go down and i feel like that always takes length out of it if you know you know still absolutely love this though and i was very excited to be included in this and I would love to do it again someday. And I'm not sure if it's still on 30% off. Probably, it will probably depend on when you're watching this. But for their release, I know that they have had the pattern on sale for 30% off. So if you're interested in it, I would get it quickly while it's on sale. <laughs> That is all my projects that I have to share. So I do have one other test knit, but I can't really share anything about it until probably July. So I will be excited to show you more about that then. But that is also taking up a lot of my making time. So I feel a little, a little stretched right now, which is a problem of my own making. So I wanna talk for a second about my future making plans. If you listen to the audio podcast, which is released every Wednesday on the Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever podcasts are listened to, you should be able to find it. Um, but I do that podcast with my friend Becky, who is from A Hand Knit Letter on Instagram. So we were talking last week about our plans for Rhinebeck. So we're definitely in the planning mode. We have booked accommodations, still need to get our plane tickets. But yes, our plan is to be there. And so mentally, I'm already trying to plan my outfits. <laughs> A few things I want to finish up knit-wise is one of the tests I'm working on right now. I think I want to sew a dress also, maybe a hinterland dress, but I would love to finish up my Aurelia pullover, which was a test I did for Sorry Nordland. We only had to finish one sleeve and the yoke, which I did, and I haven't gotten any further. <laughs> I would love to finish that. I want to finish my pressed flower shawl because I think that would be a really fun outfit to wear together. Then. I was thinking about what else I want to do before Ryan Beck. I thought I would really like to make a Winter's Beach Cardi by Andrea Mowry. So I do want to make that. I'm not sure I'm going to have time though. That is on the agenda. I need to finish up my other test knit, which I plan on wearing one day. And then I have some yarn from Camellia Fiber Co. And it is their flax fingering weight so 50% alpaca 25% linen 25% silk it's 100 grams it's a three ply I love it I love it but I really love it I think it's so pretty and I actually have a couple of patterns in mind that I would like to do short sleeve so I need to figure out if I'm gonna have time to do that or not I would like to do it before Rhinebeck. I would like to finish my Birds of a Feather shawl. That would be two different shawls. And I would also like to finish my classic ribbed hat by Pearl Soho. That's in a sort of greenish color. And I think that would be really nice to top off one of those outfits. That's a lot for me though, because I tend to take longer to finish projects. I'll work on like four at once and then it takes me a while to get through them all. I'm not sure if it's doable. <laughs> Another thing I really wanted to make this summer is a square tee, which is a DK weight pattern. The yarn I went to make it in is this Casey colorway. So this is dyed by Cami Jo Knits, my friend Camilla. She is an amazing dyer. She also dyes fiber. And if you are interested in fiber, or if you're interested in yarn, you should 100% go check out her Casey colorways because they have all my favorite colorways in one. So this is a new base. It is a DK weight alpaca base, and it is so soft. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. It has this really lovely sheen to it as well and I think it's gonna make a really beautiful short sleeve square is it the square tee or the square top 
anyway i think that's gonna be so beautiful i cannot wait to cast this on soon this is it in this game and oh the colors are just they get me every time <laughs> here's the casey colorway dyed on luxury sock so this is an 80 10 10 um merino cashmere nylon mcn base it's a two ply and it's oh stunning i love it This is it on the Cami Joe sock base, which is an 80-20 merino nylon. Y'all, it is incredible. So Camilla very generously sent me a few skeins of this. And as I said, I'm immediately casting on a square top or tee. I cannot wait. But she also gave me this skein, her Cami Jo sock, for me to give away to one of you lovely viewers. So thank you very much, Camilla, for your generosity. You guys definitely need to check her out. She has a YouTube channel. She has super cool monthly colors that she does as well. And if you follow her on YouTube, you'll be able to see sort of everything that she's got going on. She designs really fun patterns. She is just absolutely lovely. If you would like to win this beautiful skein of yarn, then all you need to do is make sure that you are subscribed to both my YouTube channel and Camilla's and leave me a comment below. Since I haven't been feeling that great, I have been listening to a lot of audiobooks lately while I have been sitting. <laughs> so I did finish up the third Thursday Murder Club and it was so good. I'm so glad I went back to it. I started it off and as soon as I started it, I realized that it had a new narrator and it sort of put me off of the book for a minute because I love Leslie Manville and I think she did such an amazing job that I did not want to listen to a different narrator. But I took a break from it for maybe even a couple months and I went back to it and I enjoyed it so much more. I thought the narrator actually did an amazing job and the story was excellent. I loved it. Unfortunately, when I finished it, I was sort of at a loss as to what to listen to next. So I found a new series which is called the Marlowe Murder Club and it was sort of classified in that same cozy amateur sleuth mystery genre and so I thought it would you know might be a good listen. I think I would have liked it better if I had not just listened to the Thursday Murder Club book because it was very similar to the Thursday Murder Club vibe and and it wasn't as good. <laughs> so in my opinion, I thought that the Thursday Murder Club was just is so much better. The characters are so well developed and I love them all. And this one felt lacking compared to that. I think I would have liked it a lot better if I hadn't just read that book. So maybe don't read one after the other. <laughs> but it was still good. I feel like I knew what had happened in the plot. From, you know, I saw it coming from a, a mile away, but it was still good. It's hard for me to find a mystery that just totally takes me by surprise anymore. So, I did listen to that one. I, I don't know if I'll listen to another one in this series. I may if I get desperate. But now I am listening to a Dr. Nell Ward mystery, um, which is called A Murder of Crows. She's an ecologist, and so she studies all these different things out in nature and she is implicated in a murder and she needs to try to clear her name and the best way to do that I guess is to solve the mystery. So I have started that book and so far so good actually. Another cozy mystery amateur sleuth. <laughs> I've got a lot of books by American authors in my Audible wish list. But when it goes time for me to pick my next book, I'll listen to a sample. And apparently, I'm now only satisfied by British narrators. Narrator? 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 A British narrator? 
The narrator. 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 British narrator. A British narrator. Anyway, we'll see. I'm, I'm thinking about trying out The Maid's Diary by um, Lorith Ann White is who wrote that. Anyway, I may try that out next. We'll see. We'll see if I can listen to American talk. That is all for now. I need to jump on my knitting and get some work done on those tests. Thank y'all so much for joining me today. If you enjoy videos like this, then please make sure and hit that like button. And if you're not already, please make sure and subscribe. It helps my channel out so very much and it allows me to continue producing new video content. I look forward to chatting again soon and until next time, happy knitting y'all. Bye.